Yeah, dude, Wei Shen was a fucking badass, man. This is so fucking good. Like, what happened? Like, we had so many, like, like, this was so cool. World of Warcraft is a fantasy wait a second, universe. Wait a second. In a fantasy universe, there, there has to be some kings. But Troll? Warcraft, uh, all of them kind of suck. King Terranus Menethil, killed by his own son. Be King Rostakhan, died to the Alliance. Stupid King asshole. Grimming, King Magni Bronzebeard. Champion. And King Varian Wren, who... Went out like a... Like, he went out like a boss. That was so badass. Okay. That was kind of cool. But he also got stabbed by two random mobs and then turned to That dust. was stupid as fuck, man. Like, I can't believe it. I was so mad. Like, I wish that, like, the, um... The un I, I wish he would have just blown up with the Fell Reaver. And, like, at least he would have killed it. That would have been it, you know? Not get stabbed in the back by a trash mob, man. Like, we used to AoE farm those guys. Worthy have not yet learned of my power. When the thunder the echoes, dick. all other kings, queens, emperors, and rulers tremble in fear because Lei Shen, the Thunder King, is easily the most powerful and impactful ruler Azroth has ever seen. Absolutely. His history is critical to Huge understanding dick. the ancient legends of Warcraft lore Massive. and has remained a fan favorite in the lore community. Let's find out why. And, and like, what's so crazy about this is he got introduced Before we talk in about one the Thunder patch. King, I need to pay my bills and let you know, you're not safe. From what? No one is safe. Unless you have NordVPN, the sponsor of today's video. I'm fine if with that. If you're like this me and you use the internet to look totally up obscure true. lore facts about your favorite true. fictional characters that true. no one really cares Very about. True. Absolutely. Or you uh, just just use the internet. You are at yep. risk from third parties and your internet service provider. Yeah, we love NordVPN, guys. Your activity. Shameless, That's why I use NordVPN. And there's a deal right now to get a two-year plan with one additional month free with a huge discount. Another great thing about using Nord is it grants you access to region-locked content on the internet with just a click of a button. Did you know that you can get access to Dutch Netflix, which has Lord of the Rings right now? Wow, that is geweldig. I'm more... amazed that they still have such region locking problems like this. Whenever you can just use a VPN and bypass it with like no effort whatsoever. There are a lot of VPNs you can use that are actually like they're free too. They're probably shitty, but like you can use VPNs that are, yeah, it's like contracts. I, I know it's just weird. Know Click the link down below and secure your privacy Thank God and maybe we have even that. explore Middle Earth with this two year plan with one additional month free with a huge discount. Nord is so confident in their product that there is also a risk free 30 day money back guarantee. So go to nordvpn.com slash platinumwowvpn. Thanks, Nord, for sponsoring this video. The ad is now over. Wow. The Mogu were once a race of stone, who served the Titans during the ordering of Azeroth. After the curse of flesh transformed them into fleshy, mortal creatures, everything changed. With flesh came the emotions of weakness, fear, greed, and anger Pussy that drove the behavior. Mogu into a constant state of internal conflict. Damn! <laughs> So they're just killing each other this all the period time. of time was known as the Age of a Hundred Kings, a time where the southern reaches of Azeroth were thrown into a constant state of warfare as the Mogu struggled to overpower one another. They're still Long fighting ago, each other. Their as far Titan as I know. keeper, Master Ra Den, had just disappeared, <laughs> leaving his servants aimless, confused, hey. and desperate. That was over a millennia ago, and still. Some Mogu desperately cling to the idea that he may one day return. He did. Li Shen was raised during this time of conflict. Oh, he learned the art of warfare from his father, who was one of the many warlords who fought for power among oh, the Mogu, shit. even in his young life. Li Shen saw the Mogu's infighting and squabbling as a destruction of their race's great potential. True. The young Mogu was forced to confront this firsthand as he watched his father be murdered by one of his closest advisors. Instead of taking his father's place, Li Shen chose exile and decided to wander the lands and meditate on the failures of his kind. 
typically in Mogu culture, it was customary that when a warlord was killed, their rivals would then slay all of the slain warlord's family to snuff sense. out their lineage. Yeah. But when the Mogu saw Lei Shen simply give up and walk away, they, said, they assumed it. that he had gone mad and would not pose a threat ever again. Well, thank God, that's but, all. Oh, how wrong they were. Yeah, there As it is. Lei Shen traveled, he pondered the folly of his people and their circumstances. Where did Master Ra go? Was the Curse of Flesh a part of some master plan the Titans had created? Was this all just a test to prove the loyalty of the Mogu? Were the Titans they worshipped waiting for them to be enlightened by some new discovery? And the question Lei Shen pondered the most, how has World of Warcraft been out for 17 years and there is still no ducks in this game? That Holy fuck. Oh my god. Um, uh, I, I'm thinking about it. I think he's right. I think maybe there's a battle pet. Maybe there's a battle pet. I don't know. Even that I'm not sure about. That conundrum he was most befuddled by. <laughs> Li Shen realized that if he seek the answers to his inquiries, Th he'd that's... have to find Master Ra. For years, yeah. Lei Shen searched and... Sh for Church. years, Lei Shen... Sh for years, Lei Shen searched endlessly to find right. his master once again. Eventually, he found an entrance to a hidden vault Mogus north of the veil vale that once held great importance to the Mogu. Yeah. Kick that bitch open. Get the mount from Elagon. Within the stillness of the vault, Ra Den sat quietly. The oh. Titan Keeper gave no reaction to Lei Shen. The Mogu questioned like, him, hey, asking what hey. the purpose they now had. Why had he just stopped contacting his servants? Was this all according to plan? Yeah, and what the fuck is where going are on? the ducks, Master Ra? Where are they? Days and weeks passed, and not a word was given. Lei Shen then realized that Master Ra was not quietly contemplating some master plan. He was dead. He had just given up. This enraged Lei Shen. Master Ra was supposed to be a yeah. literal instrument of the Titan's will, but now he had just abandoned their purpose to do literally nothing. Just pussied <laughs> out. Time grows short. Lei Shen's words had finally gotten a reaction out of Ra, okay. and the Titan Keeper led him to see the reasoning for his absence. <laughs> the two traveled to the Thundering Mountain, a hostile, cursed place no mortal has ever traveled to before. There is no hope. A coming threat will consume us all. Within the depths of the mountain, Ra Den showed him the last remaining essence of the slain titan Amanthul. The Pantheon... Oh! So you guys have to understand that this used to be the story. Now, what we have to understand is, uh, it, it, it was, um, time is a very complicated, uh, it's a very contrived web. It's important to not get yourself caught up in the details or anything like that. It's time is a tangled web, guys. It's just, you, you never really know what's real, do you? was dead. All of the titans were killed thousands of years ago. Sargeras had killed them all and either his army of demons yeah. or the horrors of the void would consume all of the universe. Ra Den had simply given up after he found out Gave all the titans the were dead and didn't even bother telling the Mogu. It was pointless to fight back. The titans had lost and their downfall was inevitable. You only delay the inevitable. Ra Den hoped that showing this truth would make Lei Shen give in to the same despair, but it actually had the adverse effect. Just knocked him upside the head! The fuck that shit, bro? Lei Shen found Master Ra's despair as pitiful. He had hidden the oh. truth from the Mogu. He let them fall into madness. He let them yep. fall into a constant cycle of pain and misery after his Just abandonment. knocked him upside the Ra head. Den was no demigod. He was a faulty tool who lacked the vision of their masters. 
It's Damn. all of the Titans were dead and their servant refused to continue the Pantheon's glorious legacy, he would do so himself. Damn! Bro, I didn't even know that. Wait. It is said that Lei Shen ripped the very heart out of Ra Den. The power was like nothing he had ever felt before. What? No longer was he a servant. What? He was the now fuck? a god. Oh my god. Lei Shen's most devoted followers traveled to the Thundering Mountain and dropped to their knees once they saw his glorious new form. Damn. They said, We will call you the Lightning King. Lei Damn, Shen simply bro. scoffed in response. Lightning strikes in an instant and is over in a flash. But thunder, thunder, thunder proclaims the coming of the storm. Jesus thunder Christ. quakes the skies long before the lightning strikes. God damn, and bro. thunder like, what echoes the fuck? in the hills long after the lightning's power is spent. It is thunder that sends animals cowering and fills the hearts of peasants with dread. Let thunder be my herald, so that my power is felt throughout the land. That's I fucking will awesome. Be the Thunder King. This guy in one patch. This guy came out in one patch, by the way. No prior knowledge <laughs> or anything. One patch. Duck. Yes. <laughs> Duck. Oh, <laughs> My power cannot be contained. Problem solved. The Thunder King now demanded that all Mogu bow before him. One patch man. Once yep. again, their race would be the defenders of Azeroth, and they'd that continue the so Titans' cool. legacy and restore order once again. Lei Shen utterly crushed all Mogu who defied him. The fortunate ones were there killed mercifully, and the unfortunate were locked in chains for centuries until they were properly broken. The Thunder Jesus. King's iron fist struck fear into the hearts of the Mogu. God Some damn! Thought he had claimed the powers of the Vale, or was a literal <laughs> Titan reborn. But soon their fear would turn into devotion when Lei Shen displayed his godlike powers. This is where he beat an One of the Thunder King's first of many accomplishments was mastering the use of a Titan device called the Engine of Nalak Shah. With the this Titan machinery, he found a way to revert the curse of flesh in some of the Mogu and restored them to their pure forms. Oh wow! Under the Thunder King's rule, Holy no shit. land was left unconquered, as his army claimed every That's corner badass. of the Vale. This was the beginning of a prosperous new empire for the Mogu, in a time of darkness for the other races surrounding the Vale. This is how badass you know Lei Shen is. He got them out from Nalak. Like, that alone right there just sets him... Like a mile above everybody else. Like, he actually got them out from now on. Like, a first try, too. Like, that shit is ridiculous. Breakable flesh! You will make a fine slave. The first to feel the wrath of the Mogu was the Jinyu. The Jinyu realized that they had no chance of fighting Lei Shen's empire yeah, alone he's stupid and fucking allied fish. themselves with the Hosen, oh, a race wow. of mischievous monkey people who were known for their the effective The Fish Monkey Alliance. Ooh. I, um, uh, no pun intended there. <laughs> the Alliance proved to be effective no. as for 40 days and 40 nights, the monkey and the fish people held back the Mogu onslaught. But on the eve of the final battle, the Hosen betrayed them and pledged our loyalty to the Thunder King in hopes of getting preferential treatment. Smart. Of course, the Thunder King would never help such pathetic creatures. Try. I would. <laughs> this left the Jinyu severely outnumbered, but they did not go down with Got the fight. Him. During Just the skirmish, that bitch. the Jinyu waterbreakers would conjure bubbles of water and lift the Mogu into the air, only for them to plummet to their deaths. Yeah, Make that. a demonstration of these invaders, such that all nations tremble before me. Their resistance was impressive, but ultimately futile. One of the Mogu generals named Haequin 
outsmarted the Jinyu and used their very own fishing spears to wipe out the last remaining resistance. Jesus Christ. Oh man, wow, bro, like, that is just, that is sad, that is just fucking sad. And soon after, they were fully conquered by the Thunder King's army. <laughs> These insects do not know their place. Lei Shen was so humored by the embarrassing display that they made of the Jinyu, and he crafted his general 100 of the finest golden spears to praise him for his fine work. All right. With the monkey people and the fish people conquered, yeah, there you go. the Mogu marched up north the Kunlai summit. Wait. That general was in. That was one of the generals in uh, the Four Kings fight in Mogushin Vault. Oh my God! And he's the one that drops the halibird too. God damn! So everything comes together. Holy fuck! That's actually saying sword run after this. Yeah, we're gonna do one of those. We'll do a sword run after this. All right, I'll do that. That's fine. Where the panda people fled Mogu to Dar hide from the Thunder yeah. King's army. <laughs> the Mogu marched to the foothills of the mountain. With his godly voice, Lei Shen shouted, Choose the greatest warrior among you, and have him face me in one-on-one oh, -on -one combat. Shit. Should I win, your people will submit to my rule. Oh, shit. Should he win, A king that I shall his own leave battles. these lands in peace. <clears throat> Excuse me, do you not know who I am? <laughs> I am Lei Shen. The mother of Thunder King! Answer me now! What the fuck? Silence filled the air until a booming voice echoed from the peaks of the mountains whose power rivaled Lei Shen's. Challenge accepted! Oh shit! From the Let's top swim. of the mountain, the August Celestial named Zulin, the White Tiger, descended downward and the two godlike beings locked themselves in combat. They fought tooth and nail Damn. in a battle that lasted 30 whole days. God, in the that's... end, Zulin succumbed to the Thunder King's might, but he did not grant him the mercy of death. God Instead, damn. the victorious king imprisoned the tiger and chained him at the peak of the mountain so he could watch for all eternity and bask in his failure as the Pandarans served Lei Shen's empire as slaves. God the damn, Mogu bro! The Mogu used the blood, sweat, and tears of the enslaved animal people to expand their empire and oh created my structures God. like the monolithic Serpent Spine Wall. Okay, one more thing. You might know that the Pandaren yeah, actually worship serious. three other gods, yeah, and these group of gods are called the August Celestials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, it's only briefly stated in the lore, but Lei Shen beat the crap out of the other three. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> oh, no! Rip the bitch in half! Oh, my God! That's where the other three didn't do shit. Yeah, look at this. No, no problem. Miss the Pandaria, dude. Like, oh my god. I didn't even know that happened. The Thunder King's rapidly expanding empire drew notice from other civilizations on Azeroth. Yeah, yeah, Specifically, yeah. the Zandalari trolls from the east Ooh. who saw great promise in the Mogu. Well, they allied with them. One of the high priests named Zula Thra approached Lei Shen with a proposition. The Mogu held incredible power on Azeroth, <laughs> stupid but the monkey. trolls held the knowledge of the world. With their empires combined, they could fully dominate every inch of Azeroth with ease. True. At this point, there was no empire that came even close to the combined Damn. might of the Zandalari and Mogu armies. Despite this, Lei Shen, being the asshole that he is, did plan on enslaving the Zandalari when they were no longer useful to him. Yeah, of but course. as time went on, I mean, both he's parties learned that they were invaluable I mean, allies it, and were obviously. of great help to one another. Lei Shen even told Zulthra of a ritual to revive his spirit if he was ever killed. He never oh, told his shit. own Mogu Empire about this ritual because he knew how power hungry they were and how they could never be trusted with such critical information. Wow. 
Damn, he's smart! Meanwhile, in the southwest, in a tropical land called Oldham, the Titan creations called the Tolvir dwelled. They were oh, created yeah. to protect a Titan facility called the Forge of Origination. Yeah, an that's extremely the thing we powerful killed, uh, weapon Nizoth that could with. eradicate all life on Azeroth. Ooh. The Tolvir also succumbed to the curse of flesh and patiently waited for. <laughs> they turned into furries. Ooh. Rawden's return. Ooh. But one day, they received a summon from their Mogu cousin to come visit their empire. Upon arrival, the Tolvir were stunned to see how advanced the Mogu had become. Yeah. There the Thunder is. King greeted them with open arms and toured them around his humongous empire. The Tolvir took notice of the abhorrent use of slaves, but, you know, they didn't really mind it that much. Besides, they were more focused on the protection of Titan creation than Yeah, it's all right. Nah, slaves, what it's Tolvir whatever, right? Yeah. have a problem with was when Lei Shen told them that he ripped the heart out of Ra Den, their master, yeah, stole yeah. his power, and oh yeah, he also locked him in a basement in his palace where he's now sucking out his titan blood called Anima. If you've played the Shadowlands expansion before, oh. you'll know that there's also stuff called Anima, which is the essence of all mortal souls. Yes. Blizzard originally said, oh yeah, these two Animas are kind of the same thing, and then they walked back, back on that statement. And now there's two different things called Anima in the Warcraft universe that are totally unrelated. Time is a tangled web. It's a very tangled web. You can never unravel such an elaborate existence. It can never be understood fully. Nobody has any idea. So all of the anima is all Rodin's blood? God damn. Like, I had no idea. What the fuck? <laughs> Okay. Anyways, in the novel called Shadows of the Horde, yeah. this titan anima was described to be so powerful that if you tossed it on a human, they would regress back into becoming a Vrykul. And Lation Oh, that would make sense because it, it brings them closer to where they were before the Curse of Flesh, right? That's actually, that's fucking crazy. So it's like steroids. ...to make robots torture cow people, yeah. and make new races by using it on lizards to create the Sarok and oh Trogs my. to make the Grummels. What? I had no idea about that. That's incredible. Oh, and yeah, Leishin Holy planned shit. on securing the Forge of Origination for himself so he could recreate all living wow. things on Azeroth to serve him, including the Tolvir. Oh. Obviously, they were furious. They never <laughs> bowed to a traitor king like Lei Shen and stormed out of his empire. The Damn. Thunder King let them flee because he knew their choice really didn't matter. He'd take what he wanted by force. Throw. I am Lei Shen, slayer of kings and gods. You have made a grave mistake. Damn. The Thunder King and his Mogu army God damn, bro. Like, holy Lei Shen shit. was so confident he would lay claim to the forge that he invited the Zandalari not to help, but to simply watch as the Thunder King did what he does best. Jesus Dominate Christ. Dominate all opposition. At the base of the pyramid, only a few Tolvir stood armed. Lei Shen let out a Just laugh. Beat this shit out of Is him? that all you can muster? Pathetic. Do you not realize under my rule, Azeroth will be cleansed of all corruption? All shall be pure in form. All shall be one unified force, and all shall bow to the Thunder King. Oh. The Tolvir had edited the code in the Forge of Origination to only wipe out all life in Oldham, killing Lei Shen his army, and the trolls in an instant, turning oh. the once lush jungle into a barren desert. Oh. In the end, it was the Thunder King's hubris that led to his downfall, and both troll and Mogu empires would never recover from this massive blow. Turns out that threatening- How the fuck do we have such a good story? What happened? What happened? Why is- why is this so good? And why is the other stuff not? What is this? I don't understand. Like, I, I don't... Why? Why? This is so good.
What a lame ending? No, it's not a lame ending at all. The guy, he died because of the exact reason why he, he won. Like, that's, that's, you know, it's just a, that's, that's a poetic justice thing. That's the way it is. The Tolvir, who had access to a giant nuke, was actually not a good idea. Yeah. The Tolvir then shrouded the now scorched land of Oldham in mystery to hide the forge from being claimed by any outside mortals. We did claim it, by the ever way. again. But we did. We did claim that. We got it. It's okay. But of course, Mist of Pandaria came out and Lei Shen returned. The Zandalari had used the ritual Lei Shen talked about, and they used their powers combined to take over Azeroth once again. And uh, somehow they recovered his body after being blown up in a giant nuke? How? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Stop asking questions. Point is, Lei Shen was resurrected and his conquest continued once again. But, you know, not really a lot of lore happens here. I mean, he's just kind of back, trying to do the same thing again. Yeah. But this time with a lot more trolls. And, uh, of course, we kill him again. Yeah. Well. I sought only to finish the work of the gods. See, it's such a good story because, like, the guy is a huge asshole, but he has, like, I think almost most good villains are the heroes of their own story. Just, like, in general. And I think Lee Shin is a really good example of that. Is because, like, really, whenever he killed or he stole the heart of Ra Den, he did that because Ra Den gave up. It's not like he did this maliciously. He was like, okay, well, if you're not going to fucking do it, I'll do it. And that's it. And so, like, this is the, that's the best type of story, right? Is Cosmos divided? Yes, exactly. But, like, you know, like, what his goal was. Like, there's no, the Jailer, right? We don't know what the Jailer was trying to do. The Jailer is a good story. It's just it wasn't written, right? It was, it was like, we, we got basically, um, you know, the first paragraph, and that's about it. Like, with this, it's a completely understandable story, right? Everybody gets what's going on. It's like you see there's a clear beginning, middle, and end. Everything makes sense inside of it, and that's it. I think that's fucking perfect, man. Thunder King patch trailer. Uh, I don't think I've seen that in a long fucking time, man. You have a nice story. We don't see that in game. Yeah, I know. I think that's a problem. I think the game needs more cinematics in general. But will we ever see him return? I mean, he's been resurrected once, so not. why can't he be resurrected again? Yeah, no. Well, about that. Um, you see, in Mr. Pandaria, there was this long quest chain for the legendary cloak. Yeah. And uh, during this quest chain, you have to kill Lei Shen and take his this heart fight was and give it to Raphael, on heroic. who then eats it. Nom, 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 Wait, nom. what? So, uh, I, I don't think he's coming back. But no matter. Lei Shen has Why continued to be a fan favorite in the lore community yeah. because he's a villain who took matters into his own hands. A villain whose motives were justified exactly. and only wanted to continue the legacy of his creators. And for me personally, has one of the most interesting stories ever told in the Warcraft universe. This is badass. Holy shit, bro. This shit was crazy. But I will agree, he's kind of an asshole. Of course he's an asshole. That's the best part about it. Holy shit, this is badass. Can anybody let me out of here? Oh my god. I'm sorry. This, this that was so that, that's threat. so cool. Giga Chat version of Garethos? Hurts. Yeah, a Garethos that won. I don't have a heart. It, it hurts. Holy shit, man. Like, I just I, I didn't know any of this it's part of the story. only briefly stated in yeah. the lore, but Lei Shen beat the crap out of the other three. But, <laughs> like, this is just like, that's the one scene. I'll, I'll, I'll love this fucking, this shit's so fucking funny. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> if I watch the 5.2 trailer, I'll watch it. I, I will. I will. I haven't seen it in so long. I don't remember what this is. Yeah, we'll watch the, the trailer because I don't even remember what it was. Yeah, I totally fucking forgot all about it. And uh, yeah, dude, Lee Shen was a fucking badass, man. Oh my God, that was so good. And uh, wow, I uh, this is so fucking good. Like, what happened? Like, we had so many like... Like, this was so cool, and then what happened with this? Like, I wish that it was...
we had more stories like this more often, man. Story is told in a very minimalistic way in game. Most of the things are in Chronicles and I think other books. Yeah, imagine if this was all in game. Imagine if it was like all a bunch of cinematics and everything and they all played out. And like it showed this in a... Like imagine they literally show this. Blizzard fucking animates this. Literally just tearing that bitch apart, man. <laughs> like that would have been awesome, man. Oh my god.